Back when the original Xbox was coming out, there were two games announced for it that I was extremely excited for. While everyone I knew was really excited about Halo and Splinter Cell, I was pumped about two games. Ninja Gaiden, the 3D reboot, for obvious reasons at this point, and this game, Jet Set Radio Future, the sequel to a game I actually hadn't played at the time. I kind of knew nothing about Jet Set Radio, but I, what I saw of it, I liked. The music sounded catchy, the graphics looked cool, and then this version just seemed infinitely better, honestly, so I was excited for the future. And it turns out, that was a good call, because I absolutely loved this game when it came out. It was phenomenal at the time. I was so excited. It came with my Xbox, and I had a blast playing through it. But I realized, kind of recently, uh, I actually haven't played through it since it was new. So I've been wondering for a while, does the game still hold up? And that's one thing I've been curious about. This is kind of the same thing that led me to do Yoshi's Island. Just like childhood memories, and then going, was I an idiot? I don't know. Um, I think it's time to find out. So this is going to be a little bit interesting because two years ago, on stream, I played through Jet Set Radio 1. I played it on and off a little bit. I played the Game Boy Advance version of it as well, but I never actually finished it. But I had already completed Future a couple years in advance uh, before I'd even tried playing the original on Dreamcast, and uh, it was really hard going back to the original. It was really rough, especially considering a lot of stuff about Future I like so much more, and. It turns out they figured out a lot of things between the two games. So, this is going to be me also kind of looking at it from that lens as well, being like, okay, is how different is this from the original game? How much is this better? And does it hold up in general? So, I think it's going to be a fun little trip. Hopefully you're ready to ride along with me. And let's get to it. Yo! First and foremost, we meet... Corn. This game is a retelling of the original game, kind of like a, a side story, a guidance, if you will. Uh, it's a different time, it's a different universe, so characters are very similar to the original one. Case in point here, Corn is actually Tab from the first game, if you played the North American version. But apparently, Tab was always Corn in Japan, so it's one of those weird changes that we got for the localization. But we also have gum over here. Everyone's designs are a little bit different. Uh, if you've played the original game, you probably noticed that. We are actually playing as a character named Yo-Yo right now, uh, who I kinda hate. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's because of their voice when they're grinding, despite them sounding like Ad-Rock a lot. Uh, there's just something about Yo-Yo I don't like. Even though, like, his design is way better than it, what it is in the original game. I like this design a lot more. But not everyone's designs I'm super into. Gums is actually one of them. I actually think her Jet Set version is better than her future version. Not that they're either of them is exceptionally bad. They're both neat designs, but I think there's just something about the classic design for her that I like. But most other characters, I prefer their future iteration. So Jum's gonna, uh, Jum. Gum is gonna lead us in easily with Jum. I'm gonna guess that's why I made that mistake. So I'll just jump. We did it. Okay, now jump three times, but don't do it until I say go, otherwise it doesn't count, and yes, that is a thing. Okay, don't just get cocky. Anyone can do that, anyone can jump. See, I'm doing it right now, look at how much she's jumping. Sort of, jumping side to side, that works. Now to learn about grinding, which we've already done a couple times. You can do it, can't you? Yep, I'll go grind a rail. I didn't mean to grind this rail, but uh, good news, it counted. <laughs> now do it again. But only until I say go. Okay, cool. Again, didn't mean to do that, but you'll you'll find uh, you're using magnetic inlines. They're a little too magnetic at times. Don't be surprised if you just kind of get warped around everywhere. So while I'm waiting for her to keep telling me about uh, spray painting the soul of the streets, I'm gonna go hang out and look at this dog. This is Potts. He's one of the best characters in the game because he's just a dog. He just chills out here. He's got his own dog house. It's pretty sick. All right, we need ten spray cans. And they only show up once she's done talking, so let's just grab these. There we go, we got it. 
Time for some graffiti spraying then. Go to the round shaped mark, which again has not appeared yet, and pull the right trigger. With every single design you spray, you're releasing the soul to the street. Peace is done when there are no more, there are no more the round shape marked. The translation had a couple issues. It's, it's not perfect. Uh, so now we can spray graffiti. Graffiti spraying is vastly different than it was in Jet Set Radio. In Jet Set Radio, it was a whole mini game where you had to spin the stick around to make sure it lined up correctly and you got bonus points based on how you did it. And if you did it as a combo, the more you did it, the more complex the design was, but you got through the design faster. In this game, you just hold the right trigger. Done. A lot of people were upset about that originally when this first came out in Future. But I'm gonna be honest, I kind of like it better. It is so much faster to just skate along and spray. Case in point, because you can just ride up to something like this, grind, and just keep moving. It just, it, the flow of the game is so much faster. And that's the main difference between Future and the original, is that everything is just faster in general. And honestly, it's better for it. It really works out in the game's favor. And with that, We've joined the GGs. Yo-Yo has successfully joined their very first gang. But hey, if you ever feel like practicing just fine, Roboy, another great character. He can be a real pain sometimes. Actually, he's a real pain all the time. But he should be able to help you out. He'll help you set your game settings and show you how to save your game too. He's cool like that. There he is. That's our boy, Roboy, with a pretty sick design, honestly. I really like Roboy's design in general. It's real solid. Gum said, what about me? <laughs> Anyways, name's Roboy, but I'm sure you knew that. Everyone who's anyone knows who I am. Yeah, you gotta know the robot. He's got like a little pizza symbol on him. Even though I don't think that's what it's supposed to represent. It definitely looks like a pizza slice. It, it has to, right? Ain't no way you're gonna survive out there without the proper training. The streets go easy on nobody. And then that's it. He's not actually gonna train us. <laughs> we have to go find him later. So, for those who don't know anything about Jet Set Radio, the series is named that because of a radio station in the game called Jet Set Radio. Even though in North America the game was originally called Jet Grind Radio because of legal reasons, I believe, which got straightened out with the re-releases and with Future. Jet Set Radio is run by uh, DJ Professor K. It's an underground pirate radio station. Professor K is amazing. He's one of the best characters in the game, hands down. But if you played the original one first, it's kind of a jarring difference between the two. The way this is gonna work right now is that Kay is gonna jump in here and basically explain the story of the game. And I'm gonna let you listen to the future version first. Then I'm gonna give you a bit of piece of the original games. I just want you to hear the significant difference between the two. And again, as someone who went from future back to the original, Feel how jarring the difference between the two is, besides it being the same actor for both. If you listen in long enough, it can clue you in on the lowdown on the streets, too. You should tune in when you, if you want to survive out there. Wait, listen up. The show is about to begin. Take it away, Kay. Yeah, this is DJ Professor K, baby, the master of mayhem, know what I'm saying? Bring you another Tokyo Underground Pirate Radio broadcast from Jet Set Radio. I'm gonna bust into your head through your cute little ears and blow your mind with my sexy voice and out of sight sounds. Those of you prone to nose, please, should keep those tissues handy, suckers. Tokyo is being impressed by the Rokaku Group, a mega enterprise headed by Rokaku Goji. Rokaku is using his money and influence to mess with everything, industry, society, and even our culture. And he's even got his eyes set on City Hall. Lately, Rokaku's been shaking down the government, passing that Rokaku law crap, even buying off the police department. This law ain't nothing but garbage. It's just some selfish little punk's way of trying to show he's a big man. Rokaku and his gang are trying to stomp out our culture left and right. They don't give a rip about our rights. All they care about is profit. And some spineless fools have already become flunkies in their diabolical scheme. You better believe they're listening on this broadcast. But even in all this heat, there's a group of young kids who are tearing up the streets. I'm talking about the Rudis. These kids have set out to bury Tokyo and defeat it. And now they're all wrapped up in their own little territorial tug of war. 
hottest team at the moment is the GGs. There's Yo-Yo, a guy who blow your mind with silver yeah. tongue. And Gum, a real cool lady who leaves a trail of broken hearts wherever she goes. And let's not forget their leader, a self-styled genius that goes by the name of Corn. These three in your garden but riding street punk. Know what I'm saying? Lately, Tokyo's been on one bad trip. The attack on the record store in Chuo Street, Prowlers in Dogenzaka Hill, low life spreading vicious rumors, the mysterious blackout on 99th Street. And who should be following them around but the Rokaku Group's watchdog, the Rokaku Police. With the Rokaku Expo just around the corner, the crackdowns are only getting tighter. My heart ain't pounding like this since, since my first date. I was so nervous, know what I'm saying? I forgot to wear my underwear, baby. This ain't the time to be sitting around sipping afternoon tea. Game's gonna start soon, and y'all gonna be the one making the plays. All right, so that's the future version. Really well delivered. Lots of personality, a lot of charm. Excellent. Now, here is a sample from the Dreamcast version. Hey out there, this is Tokyo's very own number one pirate power station, Jet Set Radio! Over the hood, through the streets, and right into your brain! We're transmitting our signal straight to you! Y'all got your antennas on or what? Yeah, we're riding high in a smooth stream of supersonic sound! And I'm your captain and DJ, Professor K! Jet Set Radio! It's a jarring, jarring difference between the two. It's extremely noticeable. Honestly, it feels like there was no voice director for it, which would match up with some things I've heard about Dreamcast releases. So it makes sense in that aspect, but wow, that was hard to go back to after having heard Future's version. It's still the same actor both times. It's Billy Brown, which if that name sounds at least a little bit familiar, Right now, he's probably best known for the series How to Get Away with Murder. He's been in pretty much every episode of that show for the past six years. So he's the character Detective Nate Leahy in that one, if you're familiar with that show at all. And he pretty much sounds like Kay no matter what when he talks. That's just his speaking voice. It's it's a good voice he's got. You're gonna die alone in this house, that's what I know, and no one's gonna give a rat's ass. Not me, not Eve, not even your damn mother when she realizes how sick. He was an excellent choice, but man, the difference two years can make between 2000 for Jet Set and 2002 for Future. Oof. All right, let's get to the game. Everyone's dancing, but we should probably actually do something. Let's go talk to Roboy. All right, Roboy, tell me what's up. Roboy gives us all of our options. First and foremost, saving. Kind of important. Should probably do that. Next up. We can pick any character we want. Roy Boy, Roy Boy, Roy Boy will show you footage of your characters skating around so you'll know exactly who they are visually and specifically their stats. So we've got Yo-Yo with that little Yo-Yo looking symbol down there. Gum, whose logo looks like a you know chewed up piece of gum. And Corn, who is another weird thing I've been looking up. Corn supposedly uh, was originally supposed to be named Cone, but they kind of locked into Corn instead. So that's why it kind of looks like a cone. But you could also say it kind of looks like a bugle, like one of those little like corn chips. So it's, it's, it still kind of works. But every character has seven different stats to worry about. Stamina, which is their health. That's very straightforward. G stamina, which won't come into play for quite a while, but essentially that is graffiti stamina. How much uh, damage you can take by getting sprayed with graffiti. Again, we'll worry about that later. Spray, how fast, oh no wait, I'm jumping ahead. Spray is how many graffiti cans you can carry, how many spray cans. Uh, you'll notice that all the characters are the same right now, which is good for now. Well, there will be ones later that are lower and it will definitely complicate things, especially as you notice with the turbo boost because that takes 10 spray cans. Graffiti is how fast they can spray the graffiti on the stage. Right now, out of the three we have, Yo-Yo is the fastest. So we'll stick with Yo-Yo for at least this episode. Acceleration, how fast they come, they go to max speed from stopping in place, you know, acceleration is added in pretty much any game at this point. Cornering, how well they can turn while moving, and how well they can control in mid-air a little bit too. And then the final one, grind, how well they can lock on to railings and grind automatically, which is why, since Yo-Yo has the highest stat of the three, which is why he was locking on to pretty much everything. Let's, uh, 
Let's stick with Yo-Yo for now. Every character you pick does a little intro dance and a little uh, chime. That's them. Honestly, as much as I don't like Yo-Yo, I, I just hate how he sounds when you're doing the stunts and your tricks. He sounds a lot like At Rock from Beastie Boys. <laughs> Which does make him a little endearing, and also explains a couple things. Uh, let's talk about that next, after I show you this. The tutorials, there are 13 different tutorials. I'm not gonna do the default one here, basic controls, because it's literally the one we just did for the story again, but Rollboy says it. And there's a different spelling error in that one too, but we'll worry about that later. Graffiti will skip, because I'm gonna go right to the garage background music. The entire soundtrack for the game, minus some just like little jingles and chimes, uh, are here. You can listen to them at all times. There are 30 tracks to listen to. Most of them have been done by Hideki Naganuma, the guy who did the music for the original game. Uh, a lot of them are remixes this time around. And honestly, I think most of them are better than their original versions in Jet, Jet Set. And I don't know if that's a hot take per se, because there are some great songs in Jet Set Radio, but I prefer the soundtrack to Future so much better. Now, the reason I brought up Ad Rock earlier from the Beastie Boys is that he's actually in one of the songs here. So it turns out two of the three Beastie Boys in some way were involved with this game. The Latch Brothers specifically is what I'm looking for here. The Latch Brothers is a group uh, formed by uh, Mike D and a couple other different people from different groups. Uh, and they are almost exclusively known for remixing the soundtrack for Jet Set Radio Future. This is their biggest claim to fame, which is crazy considering we're talking about the Beastie Boys. But another one of the songs that they remix is, where is it? I think it's number, it's here somewhere. Might have actually already passed it. Definitely already passed it. Nope, there it is. The Scrappy which is a BS2000 song remixed by the Latch Brothers. BS2000 was another group formed by Ad-Rock. So two of the three Beastie Boys are featured in some way, shape, or form in the soundtrack for Jet Set Radio Future. But the Latch Brothers and the... Uh, not the studio. The, uh, the record label that controls Latch Brothers actually shut down, I think, a year or two after the Jet Set Radio Future soundtrack. Actually, I think it shut down before the game officially released. Which means uh, all the rights for all the songs that the Latch Brothers remixed uh, are up in the air or owned by completely different companies. So that's one of the main reasons Jet Set Radio Future has never been re-released and probably won't without losing a significant portion of the soundtrack. Like, just look at how many are labeled with Latch Brothers here. I'm going to slowly scroll through here. I believe another one of these... Uh, there's another song or two that's also not just a Latch Brothers, but under the same label. There's just a lot that are tied up to this. That's a significant portion of the soundtrack gone. Thankfully, uh, you can play the game now through emulation. They finally, within the past year or two, made Jet Set Radio Future emulation to a point where it actually works. Because Xbox, original Xbox emulation, was nowhere near a good point unless it was officially supported by Microsoft. It's not perfect, which is one of the, one of the reasons we're not using the emulator. We're actually using actual hardware for this. Uh, the other one we'll go into in a minute. Before we go to the music, uh, I'm gonna try that. You're gonna hear pretty much every song in this game here. Uh, some of them, unfortunately, are gonna cause some issues with copyright. One song in particular actually bans uh, the video that you're watching in certain countries. And it's this piece of shit. <laughs> it's Birthday Cake by Siba Mato. Uh, this was one of the reasons originally that I slowed down doing this project because originally this was supposed to come out in 2016, this Let's Play. I just want you to know how far back the starting work on this began. 2016 is 2021 when this is actually gonna be released. Uh, this song originally blocked this the uh, the whole video in multiple countries, and it is mixed into the actual gameplay. You can't avoid it. Eventually, hackers figured out a way to actually remove the songs from the game, and I was going to remove it, and then there was an update to the copyright on the song. I just want you to know that I'm looking this up now because I actually didn't have this quite ready for me. Birthday Cake specifically bans any YouTube videos from being seen in Cuba, North Korea, Syria, and Iran. 
But before that, back in 2016, it just said blocked in countries. So when I found out that that was the main issue, I was okay with leaving it in. Simply because if I had to suffer through birthday cake when it was when I originally played through this game, so do you. And I know there are some people who love this song. It is very, it's a very divisive song. You will hear it when you hear it. And trust me, you won't miss it. You shall know when it's playing. Uh, there are actually three other songs that also have copyright issues, but they don't block it anywhere. So I'm going to leave those in as well. Uh, one of them making me really sad because it's my favorite song in the game. I'll 10 by Scapegoat Wax. That is also a demonetization for videos, but it still lets the video play. So I'm still going to keep it in. The other two are down here. Uh, I'm not a model by Russell Sims or Russell Simmons rather. And the other one is a statement of intent by B.I.S. B.I.S. you might also know from the ending theme of the Powerpuff Girls. The original run of the show. So the, they're known artists. And I mean, that's just the way it is. Like the original Jet Set Radio had Dragula by Rob Zombie in it. it there were well-known artists put in there. J5 was in there, like stuff that would definitely be copyright issues now. But in the 2000s, no one gave a shit. So that's why. So I'm going to avoid playing those for the actual uh, garage music. But they're still you're still going to hear them at some point. All those songs will pop up at some point. We'll leave it to the current song right now, which is Humming the Baseline DS Remix by Hideki Naganuma, remixed by David Soul. But, how about we talk about the actual reason we're here? Graffiti. There are a couple ways to play this game. You can unlock graffiti in the game, or you can make your own graffiti. Let's make some graffiti. I just want to show you how this system works. You can pick whatever size you want. There are five different sizes. There's SS, S, M, L, and XL. I'm assuming small, medium, large, extra large. SS, I assume, is supposed to mean super small, but the file size for them is the exact same as small, so uh, you can either call it super small or signature spray, because you're going to be using this one specifically a lot. You can go in. There's a bunch of different tools. So you pick your color. Move your tool around. And then you can just... Uh, spray by holding the trigger so you can just make whatever design you want so here's a little like a blue blob we'll add a little bit of purple to it I don't know how to change no there we go that's what I'm looking for left trigger you just add a little a little color here a little smiley there you go it's beautiful this is blues clues if they got into like grape jam it's perfect there's a bunch of other features you can add as well you can erase things obviously you can zoom in for you know to see how bad your work really was uh you can add stamps, pre little pre-designed things they put in here. Let put, let's put a little, uh, a little Pac-Man ghost in. Perfect. This is this is great art. I can definitely see why, why I played around with this so much. Ah, oh, yeah, perfect, perfect. Even add in some text. Let's add in. Uh, I want to move this around. I don't want it to go where it's actually going to be going here. Uh. No, I actually want to put the letter in first, huh? Okay. Dog. Perfect. Now we can change the font. Except it's not working. <laughs> so, you can tell. I was super prepared for this part. Uh, you can move them around. Let's put, let's put the D over here. And let's move the O up here. I feel like I'm making an adult swim sketch right now. Dog. Oh, oh, let's make the G bigger. The G's slightly bigger. No, let's, let's shrink it, actually. Doji. Perfect. You can change the letter size, turn letters, change view, etc. There's a bunch of different features you can do with it. As you can see, it's kind of limited. It's neat, but you can't do much with it, which is why we're doing something special instead. Let's, let's save this. There. Graffiti is saved, so you can see my amazing dog art. What we're doing instead with this playthrough is we've hacked the game for custom graffiti. Back in 2016, uh, there was a website going around called JSRF Inside, run by a dude named Neodos. Now, Neodos had been learning how to hack the game. And they had uh, succeeded to a point. They were mainly focused at the time on uh, unloading the models and getting access to all the hidden content in the game. 
but they had also figured out how to actually put custom images into the game as well for graffiti. They'd figured out how to do it for the SS size, but they hadn't worked it out for anyone else, for any other size, rather. I emailed them back in 2016, asked if there was any way, if they had figured it out, and if there was any way I could help. They sent me the method they used to do it, but said it only worked for double S, and I tried it out on everything else, and it worked fine. So, Neodos built a tool to load the graffiti into the game, and now you can just easily hack in images as long as you have a modified Xbox. Sorry, this is an actual official one of the game, so let's uh, change it to what we'll actually be using here. So, what we've done is all the graffiti that we'll be using through the playthrough has been made by community members. Uh, my art community has actually made a number of pieces of graffiti to put in the game. All the ones that you see here right now, uh, with the exception of this one, this one was made recently. A number of these other ones were made actually back in 2016 when I originally talked about doing this project before I got sidelined. And then... <laughs> And then there's this picture. This picture, I fucking love this picture. This is the picture I used to actually uh, test out the graffiti hack in the first place. So this is a picture of my buddy Gerard, the completionist. I absolutely love this picture. I don't even remember where it was from. I think it was from weird convention picture Gerard took. But I asked him, was it cool to use it in the playthrough? And he said, go for it. So I have to give a shout out to my boy, Gerard the Completionist, for letting me use this and letting me spray his, his face all over Tokyo Toe. Uh, we also have, in the S slot, this is the concept of Wah by Macro de Satire. This is Sweet Egg by Lead Mirror Knight. This is uh, Beady Piranha by Clo Chloe. And this is Bagel the Wire Chewer by Lethal Highway. I've linked their names on screen and links to their actual Twitter or any other place you want to check out for them. They're also going to be put down in the video description as well if you want to check those out. And if for some reason you want to get involved and make some graffiti as well, here's a quick setup of instructions. Each graffiti comes in a different size. Double S and S needs to be 128 by 128. So 128 with 128 height. And that's pixels, obviously. Medium has to be 384 pixels width, 256 height. Large has to be 512 pixels width, 256 pixels height. And extra large is 1024 width by 256 height. They almost all use the same height except for S and double S. If you want to submit graffiti, Submit them on Twitter with the hashtag JSRF Graffiti. That's J S R F G R A F F I T I. I'll be keeping an eye on that tag and grabbing any submissions I really like and popping into the game. Make sure you actually throw in your uh, your con your username you want to be used and the contact info you want, like whatever site you want linked in for you. Like if you want to link your Deviant Art, any other website you show your art off on, whatever. I want to just use this as a chance to just have fun with people and show off their art as well. Uh, I've already got a lot of submissions from my community as well and from our art Discord. So I've got plenty to go through on that, and that'll be also where I'm picking a bunch of options from. And if you don't like this, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I just want to have fun and show off some of the talented people in my community. And uh, we also did this for when we played through Jet Set Radio, and it was a lot of fun. So I figured we would just, you know, bring it together with this one. We've been here for a long time. We have not even gotten to the actual gameplay. This has all been explaining. I'm so sorry, guys. But I think we've got everything locked down. How about we go actually do something of note? Let's actually go do our first mission. So, Kay mentioned there's stuff going on in Dogenzaga Hill, but he didn't mention a lot of places. The only place you can go to right now is Dogenzaga Hill. Right here. If we try to go anywhere else, there's a bunch of entrances there. Shibuya Terminal, 99th Street, Rokaku Dai Heights, and, uh, actually, no, sorry, that's 99th Street over there. Uh, if you try to use any of these right now, they kick you away. So we're just gonna go straight to Dogazaga and the first proper stage of the game. Yo, 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 all right. Let's get this party started. I'll be your audience, so let's see what you got. Mm -hmm. Someone done stole the goddess in the streets. The statue of Dogen Zaka Hill. I bet the punks who did this are the same ones who are spreading all them nasty rumors. Cover Dogen Zaka Hill in graffiti and flush out those rumor spreading scumbags. All right, that's our mission. So the original Jet Set Radio was more of a pick a level and go. Jet Set Radio Future is more of an open world style game where you can just kind of skate around and do whatever you want. But, we need to do something important here first. 
Well, I realized I screwed up because I don't actually have any paint on me right now. Hey, brief update for you. The graffiti point right in front of your eyes, all one word for some reason, is not the regular kind, but it's a so-called graffiti stop. You can switch your character or save game data here. Cool, huh? A start bubble pops up out uh, once you get close to the site. Press start to sneak into the main menu. You'll find one of those in each stage. Ha ha ha! We need three spray cans for it, though, because it's a medium-sized graffiti. So let's go find some paint. Conveniently, it's in the air. Paint is all around us, as are graffiti souls. Graffiti souls are the collectibles of this game. They unlock new graffiti sprays for you to use in-game. Since we're doing modified graffiti, it's not gonna be really important to us. I'm gonna pick them all up anyways. But since we're using the modified graffiti, what I'm gonna do instead is every time I grab a graffiti soul, I'm gonna show you what actual art piece we unlocked on screen instead. So at least you get to see what you can unlock and choose from if you play the game properly. If you're modifying it, then you don't need to worry about it. But for us, at least we get to show off the amazing art in the game because the actual in-game graffiti is really good too. All right, we've got our max graffiti 30 here. So let's skate through a bunch of people. Can't actually hurt them. We can scare them off. You notice here, we've got graffiti collectibles. This one, this spray can, is actually just for healing, for health, but we've already got full health anyways. The gray part of our bar is actually just what uh, we can't do. They show the max bar no matter what, so it, another character might have more health instead. So let's check this part out. Whoa! Someone's kidnapped the goddess. That's bad karma, man. Bad karma. All right, so we know that the goddess of Dogenzaga Hill is missing. Uh, weirdly enough, in the actual game, that is not spoken by Kay, but there is a recording of it in the game, so you should have just heard the recording of Kay talking. That otherwise doesn't show up in the game. It's really weird that it doesn't. All right, another graffiti soul. That is two of the five I think we need to get normally. Oh, no, it's actually only three in this one, huh? Okay. There are two sets of graffiti souls you have to get in each stage. We won't be working, worrying about the other one yet. Notice the two different types of dots here. There are small dots and big dots. Big dots are the graffiti souls that you can pick up. Small ones are graffiti spots. So let's go get some graffiti here. Here we go. Our first graffiti to spray. And it's a large. Large takes six spray cans. All I gotta do is hold down the trigger, skate near it, and you've automatically done it. Beautiful. It looks great. Now let's let's just let's just take this in. This is a perfect picture. This here is the other reason we are not using the uh, emulator version of the game. Every version of the emulator I tried for this game didn't appreciate the custom graffiti because it turns out the way they were making it work is they were just loading the old graffiti files in. So if you spray it in there. You spray a custom graffiti in there, it overlays in the shape of the original graffiti files, so it just looked awful. So, unfortunately, that's why we're skipping that. Let's get some more here. And we're good to keep moving. So I'm gonna go a little fast through here, simply because that's the whole point of the game, is just kind of free flow. So all you need to do is just slide down here, hold the trigger, and there we go. We just sprayed a bunch of graffiti. Now you'll notice it kind of warps, it's because it actually matches and bends to the actual uh, geometry of the stage. Which can make for some interesting images as a result. <laughs> but, it is working as intended. This is how it works in the game. It just, uh, can make... <laughs> Gerard, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just makes for some interesting imagery. <laughs> All right, how much paint do we have? Uh, let's stock up a little bit before we do these. There we go. Put that down there. Sometimes they'll look proper, and sometimes they'll just be completely warped. Here's our first XL. I believe it takes 10 sprays for those. They're monsters, but they look really nice when you get them all sprayed out here. God, that looks really good. I love it. I love it so much. I'm so glad people were so supportive of this idea. I was really worried about this. Uh, I'm gonna be, like, like I said, whenever I want to show off new graffiti, we're gonna switch graffiti every episode. So you're gonna see different art from different artists every episode, but, uh, 
they'll all kind of spray out like this. Different stages have a different requirement. Like, this is the only XL spray for, uh, for Dogenzaga Hill. You can see it's mainly depending on uh, small and super smalls. But it'll throw in other ones here, just wherever. It, um... I'm gonna try to show off everyone's, but don't be surprised if sometimes I have to carry over a spray from a different episode, simply because it just didn't physically show up. Alright, and with that, that's all the regular graffiti souls I need to worry about now. But there are two types. I think I might be jumping the gun actually talking about that second one now. Yeah, we are. So let's just keep going here. Let's do more spraying. Oh. That's where that graffiti spraying stat comes in. We went too fast, so we actually couldn't get them all in. So there's some empty holes here. You can only go as fast as your character is set for. Which, to be fair, I could have just slowed down the graffiti. If you hold back, uh, if you hold back on the grinding, you can actually stay longer. But again, this is one of those games where they they really reward you for going fast. They really want you to go as quickly as possible and just stock up on things. And it just feels fun to go fast. Especially considering doing tricks actually speeds up your character. There's also, of course, the speed boost, but it takes so many spray paints, uh, spray cans, it's almost not worth it at times. Time to flush out those rumor spread punks. Give them my regard. Alright, time to meet our first Rudy. That's Beat! He was essentially the mascot of the series. He technically is still the mascot of the series. He's even on the cover of this game, but he doesn't actually start your party. Weirdly enough, in the first game, he's actually like the leader of the GGs. This time around, he just joins. And honestly, I like his design so much better in this game than the Jet Set Radio version. I know the original one's so iconic, but there's something about this one I just really like. Even though it's ridiculously busy, and those weird shoulder pad pegs are really odd. I just prefer his future design so much more. I think it's the two-tone shirt. All right, so Beat's gonna run away and we need to follow him. But before we do that, we're actually gonna hop over here because down here is a collectible item. It's a cassette tape. When you get the cassette tape, you can go to your GG notebook and find challenges. There's the main stage challenge, which was covered Dogenzaga Hill and Graffiti. Fair enough, we already did that. But now we have street challenges. A grind combo times 10, an air combo times three, do 20 tricks, 50,000 points, and avenue long grind. Each one of these will unlock a graffiti soul, adding an extra five to the pool. But doing them unlocks them. You still need to go pick them up. And some of them are in really nasty locations. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually Finish with beat first, and then clean up Dogenzaga Hill for the Graffiti Souls. He's dancing, he's having a good time. Hey. Talking to me? Yeah, why else, who else would break a window open? Thankfully you are not punished for screwing this up. If you don't make the jump, uh, you just have to skate back and just set up for it again. They're actually surprisingly kind with some of these challenges. Hmm. Breaking more windows. Of course, the camera shows us more or less where he goes. Pops up here. So now we just gotta go follow him. Hey. Little punk beat Sagoth towards the sewer. Yeah, might wanna chase after him. I almost feel bad because they apparently already repaired this window between Beat leaving and now, but I'm about to make it so much worse. See, even that lady said God damn it at me. So Beat went through the sewers here, which is a nice half-pipe if you want to try half-pipe tricks. Half-pipe tricks are not comboable, which is kind of annoying. But you can do cool shit. Like that. You can do inverts. Can you I think can you fail an invert? No, it just eventually kicks you out of it. Okay. All right, so Beat is up here. Gonna double back and spray this because we didn't have any paint before. So now we can actually use the uh, the warp point. So we can save here whenever we want, and we can change characters. As you can see, there are a lot of characters. There are 24 characters unlocked in the game. However, I think only about half of those are from story mode. The rest you unlock in the post game, and the post game is decently substantial. But let's let's uh. You know what? Screw it. Let's play as corn. Boom. 
Nice quick switch. And you got a good quick recap. What you got to do is go after the punk, and conveniently he's just here dancing, so I didn't really have to go far. So you're the leader of the GGs, huh? How's this sound? If I beat you in a race around Dogenzaga Hill, you and your buddies have to answer for me from now on. I want to point out something too, because this is the perfect chance to do it. You might notice in the text bubbles, there's a little mark above the S's. This is a font issue the game had. Apparently just because the S's are just a tiny bit smaller, there's a little notch above every single one of them. It happens in multiple versions of the game. I've seen some that have had it fixed, but all the ones I have, the modded version and my two physical versions, the Sega GT bundle that came with my Xbox and the standalone one, all have this issue. So I guess it just wasn't noticeable on a CRT back in the day, but now, because you're watching this on YouTube or on a flat screen, it's way more noticeable. Hopefully it does not bug you. All text has this issue, even K's dialogue during Jet Set Radio scenes. If you beat me, well, we'll just see when it happens. Which is chosen. No. Huh? You're so boring. You can say no to anyone, they really don't give a shit. They'll just repeat the dialogue again. Oops, and then you get so used to it, you stop paying attention and pick no again. Which is chosen. Yes. Hope you won't regret that. And now we have one of the different minigames in the game, City Rush. Race a lap around Dogenzaga Hill. Conveniently, the first stage is designed in a perfect loop, so you pretty much know where to go. So now we've got that done, we just have the race beat. If we win the race against beat, he joins the GG's. If he doesn't, if we lose, we get a game over. Straightforward. Three, two, one, go! Conveniently also, your spray cans carry over from if you had them earlier, so you get turbo boosts if you have them right away. Also, doing tricks on railings make you go faster. You'll notice the speed marker is down there in the bottom right. However, the AI can also... <laughs> the AI can use spray cans uh, for turbo boost, but they can also get stuck on geometry as you might have just noticed Beat just did, so we ain't got much to worry about. Okay, let's take a different path this time around. We're actually going to jump over here. You can hear Beat faintly in the background. You can actually also attack him too if you really want. You can just uh, tackle him and bump into a wall. Uh, but I figured just knowing the faster lines was better this time around. So let's just cut around here. There is fall damage in the game, but it's a lot kinder than uh, than Set was. You can fall from a much higher distance before taking damage. In fact, we'll probably take some here, unless we land on a grind rail. No, we're fine. Boost up here. Probably should have caught those cans. We needed the extras. You can go multiple ways. You don't have to take the upper paths. They just they show that to you because it's more straightforward because it's just a straight line. But you need you want to go as fast as you can. Obviously, you don't want to lose the beat because right now, if you look on the map, beat is pretty far behind us. We don't really need to worry. He's the blue dot there, obviously, but we can just kind of skate ahead at our own leisure or just defy physics, you know, as you do. Jump over here, and it's over. Hey. Now, in the original game, anytime you did something like that, you were ranked. All stages had a ranking system. They went from, like... Uh, like, boring to Jet. I forget what the actual first marker was, but, like, Jet was the highest end. That system is in this game, but it is hidden. You do not realize it's in the game until you've beaten the game. So if you do the challenges fast as they're coming up, you may save yourself some grief in the end game, but only a little bit. Just be aware of, you know, go as fast as you can or try to learn them as best you can, but it also is not a big deal if you don't care about the endgame content. Okay, okay, you win. You guys are tough than I thought. I think I'll chill with y'all for a bit. Beat has joined you. HQ to all squads. Youths on skates have been sighted in the vicinity of Dogenzaka Hill. All squads investigate immediately. Hey! Hey, the cops are going to be here any minute now. I'm going to head over to your garage if you don't mind. Those cops are pretty hardcore, you know. If you're just a beginner, you're probably better off laying low with the garage, too. Now for the one of the main mechanics of the game. Fighting the cops. 
Yo, 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 the Rikaku group's dogs just showed up, and they probably ain't looking for your autographs. Let's use those pretty white shirts and do some serious artwork. Now, here's the thing. The game makes you think you have to do this right now, and it's pretty simple what, what you need to do. But I'm going to pretend this is your first, our first time playing, and we're actually going to leave. This is one of the few police uh, combat situations where you can just leave. If you don't feel confident enough, or if you want to do a quick tutorial, come back here and Roboy will actually teach you about it. You! I shall enlighten you. Come here. You talking to me? Alright, well we can save again. I might as well, I'm right here. But now we can also go do a tutorial. Oh wow, we've been on this episode for a while, damn. We can still do basic controls with our two new ones. Cop Battle Beginner and Turning. I'll do turning, because it's actually really short. This is not a crucial move, but you may need it to look like you might have some semblance of skill. To do a 180, press the Y button while moving. Yep, that's it. That's all the tutorial is. Press Y while moving. And do it three times. But make sure it says go first, otherwise it doesn't count. With that move, nobody will know that you're a noob, okay? Yo, I'm running this gang role, boy. What the hell? Don't tell off corn like that. Now the actually important tutorial, cop battle. You're gonna be doing this a fair amount in this game, so it does help to know this. My name is Roboy. Oh, my real name is Roboy, and my nickname is Roboy. But you can call me Roboy. Oh, I'm Master Roboy. Your pick. We're obviously an amateur, so <laughs> so again, Corn is running this gang, you jackass. So it looks like I gotta teach you how to escape from the cops. Use that fake policeman for practice. First, run in, run right into policeman to knock it down. Well, unless you're just weak, then there's nothing I can do to help you. All right, so we can just knock over this guy. You have to be going at decent speed, otherwise he just kind of moves with you. Which, to be fair, I feel a little bad because look at this adorable face. He's got the monkey, the like the ape escape monkey face going here. But it's corrupt cops. Let's fuck him up. Do it again. I suppose that's probably the best you can do. After you knock the fake policeman, get up real quick uh, to it and pull the right trigger. If you spray it before it gets up, you'll disable it. Oh, and I don't for and I don't forget to pick up a spray can either. There's nothing more pitiful than watching someone try to tag with empty spray cans. I'm gonna make that mistake a lot. Sometimes it just happens. So let's go grab some paint because we can't do anything unless we have any. I think they're all in the same spots they were in the paint tutorial. Yep, sure enough. And I missed and landed on the speaker instead. It depends, depending on the character you're fighting, it depends on how much spray, uh, spray paint you're gonna need. So, this guy, if we can hit him. You can also lock onto them with the left trigger. The game hasn't taught you that yet for some weird reason, but it, uh, it makes combat a little easier. Knock him down. One spray can for him. And we've sprayed Gerard's face all over him. Can your tiny human, little human brain comprehend all that? Put your back into it and tag. Got it, dude. And please, practice before you try this out in public. We don't want you embarrassing yourself out there. So there we go. Now we know how to fight the cops. Let's go do it. Unfortunately, this is a thing I hate about the game. Uh... I don't know what that was. That wasn't what I hated, though. That was kind of awesome. Unfortunately, doing tutorials gets rid of all your spray cans. So we had like 20 going in here. Uh, they're all gone. So we, now we need to go get more. Conveniently, beating up the cops makes them drop spray paint. So, let's fight them. Go. Okay, grab some blue cans. Every blue can is five paint. So we're set now. Knock into him, spray him, and enjoy Gerard's face all over a policeman. Uh oh. Uh, you know what? Let's show this off too. So the cops will actually dive at you and grab you. I don't know if. Yeah, there we go. So you can't get rid of them if you move around unless enough time passes. But if you jump on a grind rail, they'll immediately jump off. Yeah, Kay's teaching you about locking on the cops. You really don't need to do this tutorial at all in the garage. The game the game does a good enough job just with Kay talking to you, so. You don't really nerve break that much. Oh, God, I love that face. Uh. Just turn around, right, uh, left trigger to keep turning around the camera, lock on any targets you need, and you're done. 
Piece of cake. <laughs> Alright, with all that done. Shibuya Terminal has been covered in some kind of ugly, freaky looking graffiti. Head to Shibuya Terminal and cover that stuff up with some real artwork, please! There we go, we got our next mission from K. Before we do that, we're gonna wrap up our GG notebook here. So we need to do a grind combo times 10, an air combo times 3, 20 tricks in one combo, earn 50,000 points in a combo, and do the avenue long grind. Uh, you can do a solid chunk of these in the same spot. So let's see if we can do that. There's gonna be one issue with it though. And after that, we need to go to Shibuya Terminal, but that'll be next episode. So we're gonna just wrap up the GG notebook here, and then we'll call it an episode, because holy crap, this went a lot longer than I expected. I actually thought we'd be making the Shibuya in this episode. My bad, I should've known when I explained things, it would take a while. Jump on this grind rail here, and then go to town. Face the correct way first, that's very important. <laughs> There's our first Graffiti Soul. There's our next one. There's our third one. Oh, I jumped too early. No, I got it. Okay, cool. And with that, that one line got us four of them immediately. The only one I didn't get was air combo times three simply because we landed too fast. That's about it. Now you can see where all those Graffiti Souls popped up on our map, so we need to just go pick those up. But I am going to actually go back for a second and show off something important. Notice that grinding on this rail is only worth 10 points. 10 points again. You're getting hit by a bus? Worth no points. I do not recommend it. This rail, however, is worth 500 points per trick. It keeps going up based on what trick you're doing and how much you're repeating your tricks. There we go. That was our three combo. We were really landing too early, so we couldn't get that third one. So we've got all five now. Every zone has a specific set of rails that are worth bonus points. Most railings are just going to be worth 10, 20, and they'll go up to, I believe, 100 or 50, depending on which trick style you're using. We were using, these are X tricks, which are fast and lead you into buses a lot, apparently. Uh, X, quick, X tricks are fast, but if you want the most points, you want to do Y tricks. X tricks are pretty fast. Y tricks... Much slower, but worth a lot more quicker, because the multiplier is 16 instead of 8. But they will usually end with you being backwards, and also the timing is different on them. Uh, if you, It's all a rhythm game for doing the, the grinding and the tricks. Just press the X button when you're done doing the trick, and you'll do the next one. If you do it too fast... Sometimes it'll work. Sometimes you'll hit another bus. Or you'll hear that noise if you're going too fast. And Y moves, since they are slower for turning around, require a little bit slower timing. Again, too fast, can't do anything. There is a cooldown if you screw up the timing. It requires you waiting like three seconds before you can actually do a proper trick again. All right, that's all we're going to need to explain for now. Let's go get uh, our graffiti souls, show off our new graffiti, and then head back to the save point. Looks like we're going to loop around the entire stage with this, so buckle up. I think this first one's over here. You're gonna hear me make that noise a lot, because uh, I've got the volume a little low in my ears, which screws up the timing, if you're going for the audible timing. Because you can also sort of time it to the actual, like, yelling that your character's doing. Uh, number two... Is that the one I have the wall grind for? No, okay, cool. No, this one's easy. Alright. Well, sort of, hang on. So, I want to show you this here. Uh, graffiti Soul number two, right there, on top of that building, that's an easy jump. Graffiti Soul three is over there. I can't reach it if I go for that one first, so we need to reach that one. But we need to reach it from here, which I'm sure you already know what that means. Time for a turbo boost. Just barely make it. You got a Graffiti Soul. Uh, use another turbo boost just to make it easier. And there's a third one. You got a soul. 
You do not, again, you do not have to get all the graffiti souls, but they do have a little secret hidden thing there. And again, it gives you uh, a little secret thing if you get them all. And it technically has for a completionist if you really care that much about it. And also, it, uh, it kind of looks neat. It's nice to have the different options for graffiti. It's not gonna have any bearing on our actual playthrough since, you know, custom graffiti. But it's still nice to get. You got a graffiti soul. Although I will admit, some of these are a big pain in the ass to get. Specifically one we'll be doing next episode. I always dread. I hate it. And those who have played this game know exactly what I'm talking about. Where is this last one? Oh, jeez, my knees. The NPCs do scream random things, as you've probably heard, as you run towards them or get near them. And some of them are pretty entertaining. Uh, I think this one's up top. Yep, sure enough. He's peasy. You've already been through all these spots. And that's it. You got a graffiti We've got all the graffiti we can get currently in Dogenzaga Hill. And Dogenzaga. I think Ka. Da, da ka. I can't speak Japanese very well, guys. I'm sorry. Dogenzaka. I always say Dogenzaga, which sounds similar enough. All right. Do some more air tricks there, and then just get to the save point. All right. That's all we need to worry about for this episode. That was a lot longer than I expected. Sorry, guys. Hopefully, you're invested in this. But also, we've pretty much explained everything we need to worry about. You know about the music. You know about the, the custom graffiti we're doing. Again, hashtag JSRF Graffiti on Twitter if you want to submit that. Follow the file sizes you need if you want to submit anything. I am looking for original art because I want to show off artists. Trust me, I have plenty of meme submissions. You don't need to worry about just finding memes on the internet. I can do that myself. Next episode, we'll wrap up the rest of chapter one, which is pretty short. We'll get ourselves a new character. We'll start the next chapter as beat. Or no, actually, that's a lie. We're gonna play as gum. We haven't played as gum yet. And uh Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Hopefully you guys come along for the ride. I'm excited to actually just reintroduce this game to myself, and I'm excited to share this to people who have not had a chance to play this before, because, like I said before, this game's kind of a pain in the ass to play, to find a way to play, because it's really either the original Xbox. You can sort of play it on the 360, but it slows down depending on what character you're using. Apparently Korn, specifically, because of his jacket, uh, lags the game on 360, which is weird. Uh, I think also the combo disc also has issues, which is weird, because that's the most common way of finding Jet Set at this point. And then, you know... <clears throat> but, uh... Hopefully you guys enjoy the ride, and come along for it. One last thing. At the end of each episode, I want to do something a little special. Now, Jet Set Radio Future, the soundtrack and everything, means a lot to me. If you've been following this channel long enough, you've definitely heard the music in some of my old ROM hack videos and stuff like that. You know I love this soundtrack. But Jet Set Radio Future is also the game that got me to open up my horizons and expand my horizons for musical taste. So I figured, why not pay that forward a little bit? At the end of every episode, I'm going to recommend a song. Uh, that has some of the energy I feel Jet Set Radio Future and Jet Set in general kind of exudes. These songs aren't necessarily actually the same genres that show up here, like the first suggestion is not even going to be really hip-hop related, but I feel like a lot of people who like this soundtrack would probably like these songs as well. Some of them I'm going to actually play samples of the songs for, some of them I can't simply because copyright's a fun thing and I would like people to actually be able to see the video and not have it banned in the United States. So unfortunately, that's what we're gonna be starting with here now. What I am gonna do instead is if you wanna find the song easily, it'll be in the description, and if you're watching the playlist for this LP, between each episode is gonna be a link, or is gonna be the actual song as well, as long as YouTube hasn't also removed that feature by the time this LP is out. Not bitter. Uh, <laughs> so, let's start with this song. This is a song that actually originally inspired me looking into doing this LP in the first place, even though it's not really the same genre. This is an electro swing song called The Dirty Side of the Street by Caravan Palace. Electro swing is pretty much what it sounds like. Swing music, but electronic, and just with a lot more uh, fusion of the two. It's, it's a unique sound if you've never heard electro swing before. It's actually really catchy. And the reason this is the song that kind of started this was because there was a fan site originally called Jet Set Radio, jetsetrad.io, that linked a bunch of songs 
that sounded, that, that had that energy of Jet Set Radio, or would play on a modern Jet Set Radio. And this was the first song I found on that site, and I fell in love with it. So, I just want to pay this one forward. Hopefully later suggestions I can actually put into the video so you can get a good feel for it. And hopefully you enjoy listening along. Feel free to suggest your own songs as well in the, in the comments. I'm always happy to hear new music. I'm always looking to expand my horizons when it comes to music and musical tastes. So, hopefully you enjoy this, and uh, I'll see you next episode.